On Tuesday, I had the great pleasure and privilege of hearing Kay Redfield Jameson speak. She's my favorite author of books on bipolar disorder and mental illness. Her memoir, An Unquiet Mind, changed the way I viewed my history, my childhood. I could understand periods in my life where I felt so ashamed, especially when I was in school and having a hard time uh, getting through a text. I could see that passage of time in, in the context of illness, and it made me feel so much better. Dr. Jamin spoke on Tuesday about the poet Edna Millay. She read a couple of excerpts from her poetry, such as this one from First Fig. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But ah, my foes, and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. Dr. Jameson talked about the sort of mystical experience that some of us bipolars have, that feeling of hypomania and the high and the, the, the grace, the connection you feel with the world. It's unlike anything that you can describe. And then the crash afterwards of depression and anxiety and helplessness. She talked about bipolar disorder in the context of creativity and an artist's life. And I couldn't help but think about all the writers that I know and all the artists that I know. There was an actress there that was talking about her life on stage and how she would work out her turmoil. She would work out her despair on stage. She would work, work it through. It reminded me of that quote that I've um, brought up a lot on Beyond Blue, that you need to become an ex-suicide. In, in other words, you need to become transparent under God and transparent to your readers in order to escape the despair of bipolar disorder. I was so afraid to take medication 20 years ago when I was first diagnosed with depression because I thought it would take away from my creativity. I thought that I would no longer be able to write. But I agree with so many doctors that have said, not only does it make my concentration better, it makes me a better writer. It's just that the subject matter sometimes isn't death and doom and despair. It can sometimes be about children and friendship and all the graces that I experience on a daily basis. The poet Edna Millay just had a tormented life and it made me think of my godmother, my Aunt Mary Lou, who took her own life and how 40 years ago there wasn't the treatment that there is today and how unfortunate that so many artists and so many creative minds had to suffer so much because of these mood disorders. It was wonderful to hear her speak, Kay Redfield Jameson, because she's such a hero to me. And as you know, I've sort of been in the midst of my own roller coaster with the ups and downs, especially the uh, hypomania from last week and then this week, um, somewhat of a crash. And I, I sat in her audience and I couldn't help but tear up because I knew what she was saying so firsthand. But there was, there was hope in that room. There was hope in hearing her story and in hearing that medication doesn't, isn't the end of creativity. It's not the end of being an artist, a writer, a, a, an actress. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of a life, of a better life. Of a, of a treatable mood disorder. So I guess I just wanted to encourage all those artists and creative people out there that treatment isn't our enemy, it's our friend. And it works on the side of life.